On this week's show, we tag along with Michelle and Lori as they visit New Orleans and check out all of the activities and sites this historic fun destination has to offer RV visitors. Then, we join Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 as they continue with the next stage of restoring their vintage Yellowstone trailer. Later, Michelle and Lori say goodbye to Lacey. Their older Lance trailer has to hand her off to her new owners. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, where available, is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. Hi, Michelle and Laurie here for Rolling on TV. As we were crossing the country with our RV, we decided to head to New Orleans, also known as NOLA and the Big Easy. This time we specifically headed to the French Quarter so Laurie could see it for the first time. Join us on this foggy morning as we eat traditional beignets at the oldest cafe. Enjoy a hurricane at the historic Pat O'Brien Bar. And see some of the sights and sounds of the crown jewel of New Orleans, established in 1718. The French Quarter of New Orleans is ideally explored on foot, as it's quite compact and easy to get around. We did see a Class C and a few Class Bs slowly making their way through the French Quarter, but it's really much easier to park and walk. One good idea is to settle into a campground first. We stayed at the KOA New Orleans. Welcome to New Orleans KOA. And drove the short distance to Basin Station to park. But there are many RV parks in the area. One is actually right in the French Quarter. And there are also shuttle options from the campgrounds. We decided to purchase a three-day pass or the hop-on, hop-off tour bus that starts and ends at Basin Station. During this trip, one-day passes were $39 and three-day passes were $49 per adult. You get to see a good overview of New Orleans. It's a two-hour loop and you get on and off at different spots. If you do decide to go this route, try to take the whole two-hour loop if you can. The guys we had were fun and knowledgeable. Did you know Nicholas Cage purchased the last plot in Cemetery One? We were focused on the French Quarter, so we hopped off after only a few stops and didn't get the true value. In fact, if the French Quarter is your destination, park at Basin Station, pay the parking fee, and walk. It's only a few blocks away. Here we are at stop number one the original oldest coffee house called Café du Monde, and we're going to sample some beignets. <laughs> oh, they're hot. <laughs> this is Jackson Square in New Orleans, Louisiana, and this is where the flag ceremony happened where ownership of Louisiana went to the United States in 1903. Bourbon Street was first laid out in 1721 and is named after the Royal French Bourbon family. Bourbon Street boasts about 20 bars and it's legal to walk those streets of the French Quarter with drinks in plastic glasses. Our first bar was Pat O'Brien's. During Prohibition, Pat O'Brien ran a speakeasy in the 600 block of St. Peter Street in the French Quarter. In 1933, once Prohibition was repealed, it officially opened as a bar. This is a Pat O'Brien's hurricane. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> We're going to <laughs> Danger ahead, Larry. Today, there are multiple entrances to this huge block and atmospheres from a dining courtyard to private venues to historical bars and dueling grand piano nights. Although, you can purchase the souvenir glass, which we did, along with the famous hurricane drink. Please remember, you need to transport those glasses back to your campground safely. 
Another cool bar is Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop, which is allegedly the oldest building to house a bar in the country. We ate at the Cornet, which serves authentic Cajun and Creole cuisine, inspired by the Cradle of Jazz. The restaurant was founded by the family who gave Louis Armstrong his first horn, a cornet. Fried alligator, anyone? Bon appetit. We just couldn't visit Louisiana without paying a visit to Cox Sports Television, who, by the way, has been airing Rolling on TV since our first show 10 years ago. That's coming up right after this short break. Aquacam possums. So fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. I know, you can't wait to get back out and enjoy some RVing. Well, how about on your next trip, you take a brand new GoPower portable solar power system with you? You can. Together with our partners at GoPower, we're giving away a portable GoPower system that includes a 130 watt portable solar panel, inverter, extension cords, and more. The contest starts April 5th, and to enter, just visit our website at rollingontv.com and click on the contest link. And now we're here at the CST studio with Jeff Brenner, executive producer, and Ashley Coleman, the programming coordinator. Or otherwise known as the programming guru. <laughs> So Jeff, we have been, Rolling on TV has been with CST since we started in 2010. And we're now the number one weekly RV television show in the country and have been right along. A good part of that is because of you. I, I thank you, but it, it's, a, it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. You know, we love the show. You know, Ashley, as you met earlier, airs it so many times during the time. And people just begin to know who you are and mm -hmm. down here, it's a different type of RVing family. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a great fit for us when we go, hey, this belongs in our outdoor block and we're fishers and fishermen and hunters, oh, yes. but they use campers all the time. So it's just a perfect marriage. Mm, I think we have to come down here and do more projects. What do you think? I think so. Get <laughs> you down here for an LSU football game or a Saints football game and see how we tailgate out of our trailers it would be unbelievable. If you go down to the fishing areas, people will have trailers set up and that's where they will go, mm -hmm. spend the night, go fishing, come back, spend it more time and that you have those communities as you get further down into the bayou. Mm. Sounds like some great stories coming up in the future, but tell us something about CST that we don't know. We have been in existence since 2002. We just had our 17th anniversary on October 28th at 6.30 p.m. That's when we launched. So just being around this Louisiana family and then expanding throughout the country. It's just been a great run so far. And mm -hmm. it's, it's just a lot of fun to do television down here, meet great people, deal with great people like yourselves. It's just, it's been a great run. And now I'm gonna do something embarrassing. Ashley, come into the picnic. Good, you're come embarrassing her, come, not me. That's what I meant, exactly. that's what I meant. Come in and see. And this young lady, Ashley Coleman, is very instrumental in getting our show actually out there, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. It's one of the better shows that we've aired on CST, and I absolutely love it, and it inspires me to want to become an RV. <laughs> we love that. And yes, Rolling On TV is recognizable here. We asked the bartender at Pat O'Brien's, and he went, Rolling On! We asked, the, we mentioned it to the KOA. We're staying at the New Orleans KOA, and she went, 
oh my goodness, rolling on, we know you, we know you. So the word is getting out there, and we really appreciate working with you both. No, it's been a great partnership from it both really of has. us. Mm -hmm. And Thank Ashley's you. the one that makes it happen. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you Ashley. It's so wonderful to see you. Join Rolling On TV in supporting care camps to ensure that children with cancer can experience the healing power of camping at these special oncology camps. If you've never heard of care camps, now's the time to visit our website and learn all about this great organization and the work they do for these deserving children. Also, stay tuned and see how you can win a specially customized 2021 Morris River Nobo travel trailer with the proceeds going directly to care camps. To learn all about care camps and how you can win this super nobo, visit rollingontv.com. From off the road adventure camping to luxurious full-time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs budget and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norco, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid and Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Welcome back to our 1967 Yellowstone restoration project. Today our plan is to start roughing in our 12 volt and 120 volt wiring and later we'll start working on our new floor plan design. Let's get busy. When we purchased the trailer there was no power converter or power distribution center. Our plan was to completely upgrade the 12 volt and 120 volt wiring. We are adding a lot of new 12 volt and 120 volt accessories, so it will be a 30 amp 120 volt electrical system. To accomplish this, we used a Progressive Dynamics Power Control Center. The model we chose had enough circuits to support what we planned to add, and it came with a 60 amp converter and a three stage battery charger built into the unit. When it came to wiring the trailer, the first step was to rough in all of the wiring. To do that, we needed some kind of a plan for what electrical components were going in the trailer and where each of those items would be located. The best way to do that was to sketch it on a piece of paper. You don't need to be an artist, but you do need to think about everything in advance because the time to run the wiring is while the trailer is down to the bare studs. If you don't understand 12 volt and 120 volt electrical systems and branch wiring, it's best to let an electrician do this part of the restoration for you. Let's see how the wiring went. There are a couple of things to consider when planning your branch circuits for a restoration project like this. You always want to keep the voltage drop less than 5% and the maximum continuous load on your main and branch circuits should never exceed 80% of the circuit breaker's rating. Before I ran the wire, I calculated the amount of amperage that will be on our branch circuits at any given time to make sure it was safe. The wire size also needs to be considered based on the length of a run and the amperage. Normally for 15 amp circuits less than 25 feet you would use 14 gauge wire and for 20 amp you would use 12 gauge wire. Another factor for wire size is where you locate the power center. That determines the length of your runs which in turn determines the wire size. It's not really crucial with the short runs on a trailer like this but on a bigger longer trailer you would need to consider that as well.
Now I want to run our 12 volt wiring. 12 volt wiring needs to be run for devices like the water pump, fan motors, overhead lights, the refrigerator, stereo, LP gas leak detector, and anything else you put in the RV that runs on 12 volts. After we run the wiring, we want to label it like we did the 120 volt wiring, so when it's time to connect it to our power center, we won't be scratching our head. Following our wiring diagram, we ran 12 volt and 120 volt wiring everywhere we needed it. The best way to run the wire is to drill holes through the wood studs and route the wire in the most logical way to get from point A to point B. After we located where the roof vents and air conditioner would be on the roof, we finished the rough in wiring and moved on to installing the new roof decking. We used lightweight decking on the roof because of our concerns about managing weights. With the single axle trailer, you need to be more concerned about weight than with the tandem axle trailer. You only have two tires supporting all of the weight of the trailer as opposed to four. A lightweight roof decking works okay, but you need to be extra careful when you are working on the roof. This is what it looked like with the roof decking installed and all of the rough wiring completed. All of the wiring terminated where our power distribution center would be located. We left plenty of wire to make our connections at the circuits. When you restore a trailer like this, you need to consider all of the parts you will need in advance and order everything ahead of time. Think about what you'll be doing two weeks from now and order what you need then. Waiting for parts to arrive can really slow the project down. I was lucky and went to a sale where an RV dealer was going out of business and I purchased lots of parts and materials that we can use in this restoration project at a good price. Saving money anywhere you can really helps. Oh boy, I sure hope he knows what he's doing. Now that we've got our wiring roughed in, this is a great time to rough in some of the plumbing. I went to my local hardware store and picked up some PEX plumbing supplies and the plan today is to run some hot and cold water lines throughout the trailer. I'm not going to install any fittings today until I get some of the components in and I know exactly where I have to route some of the additional water lines. I did the same thing I did with the electrical with the plumbing. I drew a simple diagram to give me some idea of exactly where I expect some of these components for the plumbing system to be located. When it comes to interior paneling for an RV, there's lots of choices, but I wanted to stick with that vintage natural wood look. So what I did was I purchased some 4x8 hardwood paneling that I'm going to stain with the stain that's got a polyurethane in, in with the stain. It's going to be a lot of extra work, but I think it's going to be well worth it in the end. Maybe I can get Tyler to help me with it. I stained one sheet of the interior paneling with a wood stain, but after looking at it, I was concerned it would look too dark inside the trailer when it was all finished. I still wanted the vintage look of old weathered wood, but at the same time, I wanted it to look lighter and brighter inside. I found some white country wood stain on clearance and had an idea that I could stain the panels white and then add some color over the white, sand it all back off, and get the look I was after. At some point in time, you need to make this project your own because at the end of the day, you'll be the one using and enjoying the trailer. The next step was to install our vinyl flooring. There is more than one way to install vinyl flooring. 
If you have the old flooring, like a piece of carpet, you can use it as a template. We just clean the floor really good, spread the adhesive with the notched trowel, and laid the vinyl down. We did one half of the floor, and then the second half, and trimmed the vinyl to fit. I feel pretty good about where we are with the restoration, or should I say rebuild project. Join us next time when we start building our new interior floor plan and work on the plumbing in the bathroom and on the holding tanks. Wow, am I glad I used Aquacam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. Aquacam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Hi, Michelle and Laurie from Rolling On TV. You've seen us in quite a few productions probably by now and with our Lacey Lance, our Lance 1575. Well, she's been a beautiful RV for us. And we've had it for two and a half years. And now things have changed. My mother will be joining us on some of our camping trips. And three adults in here and three dogs, just a little bit too tight. So we have decided to sell Lacey Lance. And we put the word out there and we found the perfect couple to take her over. And we want to introduce you right now to the new owners, Jan and Steve West. Come on in. So tell us, you're first time RVers. We are. We are. Right? And yes. why, why do you want an RV now? We can travel everywhere whenever we want to. Mm -hmm. And because we have a dog and we'd like to be able to take our dog with us. Mm -hmm. And we know that's dog friendly. Yes. We do. Yes. <laughs> yes. And today we're going to actually give them uh, an informational, educational kind of tour of Lacey. And we're going to focus on two things, basically. The Truma Aquago, which is not installed standardly on Lances. Mm -hmm. They weren't then in 2017. And the WineGuard satellite system, so you can be sure to get good Wi-Fi when you go to these yeah. campgrounds. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. Are you exactly. ready? We're ready. All right. Yes, we're ready. Good. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Steve, the new owner. Laurie explains the basics of the Chuma Aquago instant hot water heater to the new owner, Steve. In here, Laurie explains the different settings on the Chuma control panel. There's nothing like hands-on learning. So I had Steve walk through setting up the WineGuard connection for their internet. It can be very complicated the first time, so hopefully it'll be easy for them when they're set up in their first campground and try and hook up the wine. Very right. right, good. Well, that's your lesson. Well, thank you. Well, Laurie, that was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. Yes, mm -hmm. it was. Nice people. Jan and Steve West, they'll take good care of our Lacey Lance. We're sure of that. Yes. Yes, very nice couple. And we, they have our number on speed dial. <laughs> In case they forget anything we told them. <laughs> There's a lot to learn when you get an RV, remember? That's right. It was overwhelming, oh. really. Yes, actually, you could say that this Lance has taught us a lot. Mm -hmm. Then we had our boo-boos fixed, so they're really getting like a new RV. <laughs> yeah. Michelle and Larry, rolling on TV. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the journey. journey. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. For more information on anything you've seen on the program, along with additional videos, stories, and news, plus some great contests, visit our website at rollingontv.com. And remember, you can also watch Rolling On TV on Roku, Amazon Fire, Vimeo, and YouTube, as well as on any of our station's streaming media services. For complete coverage information, click on the Where to Watch link on our website. 
As usual, this has been another fun production. <laughs>